Hey, what's up? Today we are going to talk about a very useful function from the Swift standard library. And as always, I'm going to begin by pasting in some code. So you can see I've pasted some code that actually computes the sum of the numbers contained in an array. So here I have my array of numbers, then I have a for loop to compute the sum, and finally I use the sum, and you can see the sum indeed here is equal to 10. And if you know Swift a little bit, you know that, well, we don't really like writing code like this. Most of the time we like to encapsulate things a bit more. Think for instance about the function map. However, here we actually couldn't use map in order to compute the sum of the integers in the array because map is all about transforming each element into a sequence, whereas here we want to aggregate all of the elements into one single value. So we are going to need a function that is a bit different than map. So the first step to understand how this function is going to work is to take a look at this code right here and see which elements are going to change from use case to use case. And I would say there are actually only two of them. The first one is here, is the initial value for our result. Here in the case of a sum, it's zero. And then the second element is right here. It's what's being done in the body of the for loop and it's the way to update the aggregated value with the current element in the sequence. And basically, if we have these two elements, so the initial value and the function to update the partial result, well, we have everything that we need and everything else can be encapsulated away. So as you can imagine, since this use case of aggregating a sequence of values into one single result is very common, well, there is already a function in the standard way to deal with it. And this function is called reduce. So let's try and see how we can use this function. So I can indeed call reduce on my array of numbers. And as you can see, two arguments are required. The first one is called the initial result. So here in the case of a sum, it's zero. And then the next one is called the next partial result. And as you can see, it's going to take, well, the result that has been computed up until then and the current value. And the goal of this function is going to be to update the partial result using the current value. So let's try and implement it for the case of a sum. I need to implement a closure. So in this closure, I have my partial result, and I have also the current value. And what I'm going to do, well, I'm going to return the partial result added to the value. And if I run this code, I will see that indeed it's going to yield the same result, which is 10. And something that's even better is that we can call this with an even shorter syntax. Because in Swift, operators are defined just as functions. So here we can just pass the plus operator, and it's going to work because what well, the signature of this operator is compatible with what reduce expects. Reduce expects a function that takes two integers and returns an integer, and it's indeed the signature of the plus operator. Okay, so we've seen how to use reduce to compute something that is pretty simple, such as computing the sum of a sequence of integers. But reduce can also handle more complex use cases. For instance, I'm going to paste in some more code. And here you can see that I'm using reduce to compute something that is different. I'm trying to compute, well, what is the maximum value inside the sequence? And the way I do it is that I start with an initial value of integer min, which makes sense because any value is greater than integer min. And then my closure to update the partial result. And the logic is we take a look at what is the current maximum. We compare it with the current value. If the current value is greater than the current maximum, well, we return it. Otherwise, we return the current maximum. So basically, we are returning the biggest one of the two. And as we can imagine, if we run this closure over all the elements in the sequence, in the end, we indeed get the maximum of the sequence. So here, if we run this code, we are going to get the value for as our result. So as you can see, reduce is a very powerful function. And in most cases, well, it can be used instead of a for loop. And this way is going to make your code a little bit more encapsulated. And before we end, I want to show you that there is actually a different flavor of reduce in the standard library, meaning that there is a second reduce function with a slightly different signature. So to understand how this second version works, I'm going to paste in some code that I have taken from the official documentation of the function. So you can see that the goal here is that we have this string and we want to count how many times each character appears in the string. So we want to know how many times A appears in the string, same thing for B, for R, etc., for all the characters in the string. And of course, reduce is a very good way to use it because basically what we want to do is that for each character, we want to update a dictionary that associates each character with its number of occurrences. However, if we were to use reduce, well, there would be kind of a slight pitfall is that as you can see, reduce 
it works by calling a closure. And in this closure, well, the current result, so the partial result, is being passed each time. And when it's just an int, well, there is no problem here. But when it's a more complex structure, like a dictionary, for instance, well, we need to remember that it will be copied every time we call the closure. And so it will be a bad performance hit if we have to copy a dictionary for each element of the sequence. And this is when reduce into comes into play. Reduce into, as you can see, it's very similar to the basic result. You pass in an initial value, and then you pass in a closure to update the value with each element of the sequence. But there is one key difference, is that if I take a look at the signature of the reduce function, you can see that the result in the closure is in-out, meaning that it's not going to be copied every time, it's just a value that will be passed in-out, so there won't be any performance hit. And in this case, it makes a lot of sense, because this way, the dictionary counts is not going to be copied every time the closure is called for each element of the sequence. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to know about reduce in order to use it into your code. So basically, every time that you have a for loop and that you might want to encapsulate it a bit more, well, remember that's probably a good use case to actually use reduce instead. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.